Hey guys, what's up? Serena Pia here from thriftdiving.com. Okay, so today's video, I'm actually gonna show you what I've been doing to my front yard. It looks amazing. If you remember in my last video, I was telling you all about the outdoor hangover, hangover, hangover. <laughs> the outdoor hangover challenge. So that's actually supposed to be the hang out challenge, not the hang over challenge. I told you in my last video, we were doing the outdoor overhaul makeover challenge. We did it last year. We're doing it again this year, but it's a little different. I've teamed up with three other bloggers. We are totally transforming our spaces to make it a pleasant place to hang out with friends and family. So for my challenge, I actually tackled the front yard too, because when you have people coming over, you definitely don't want your front yard looking like crap, right? So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything that I did to the front of my house. I'm gonna show you the makeover that I did to my mailbox. It looks really, really good. And uh, next week, you're gonna get to see what I do to the backyard. Yeah, that's gonna be a big project. But anyway, let's jump into what I did for the front yard. Be sure to go to Instagram and find me. You can find that link below and join to win all the prizes that we're doing here with Thrift Diving and Ryobi Outdoor Tools. Okay, so let's jump into this project right now. So this is what my mailbox looked like about five years ago. I painted it, hand painted, and built a whole new mailbox post. You can find that link below if you want instructions on how I did that. But it was looking pretty rough five years later. I mean, this was just recently, it was chipped. It was horrible driving up to the house and seeing that it looked like this. So I knew the first thing we needed to do was remove the weeds. So Ryobi had sent some cool tools to use as part of this outdoor overhaul makeover challenge. And I was gonna start with the 40 volt string trimmer. Just make sure that you have enough battery power to get you through your project because you don't wanna be in the middle of whacking your weeds <laughs> and you run out of power. Even with power, sometimes you gotta get down on your hands and knees and get dirty and that's what I did. I moved some of the bricks out of the way and just got in there with my hands and ripped some of those pieces of grass from in between the bricks because you know, over time, if you neglect it, it just gets out of control. So most mailboxes will just have a couple of screws on each side. You can lift it off and then you can paint it. You can do whatever you want. Here you see that I'm using a hammer, removing some of the old number house numbers. We're gonna do something cool with that later. But you'll see here that I'm using a uh, razor just to remove some of the chipped areas. But this paint was not really coming off. This is chalk paint, as I mentioned. It did start to chip, but even though some of it chipped, the other part was not coming off. And so I really needed some chemicals. I like the uh, environmentally friendly ones because I think it just works just as well and it's, you know, it doesn't smell or anything. So you can find all that below in the description for w what materials I use for these projects. Okay, so here in Maryland, we've got a lot of clay and I just didn't have any soil at the time. And I, I'm hoping, I'm crossing my fingers, hoping that these flowers do not die or the deer don't eat them. Anyway, I planted them and then hit this, I thought it was a rock, but it was actually where the old post was. And you can see that I'd moved it over probably about eight inches to you know the side, but I just used my Ryobi chainsaw, the 40 volt chainsaw, and just chipped away as much of it as I could and then planted around you know, what was left of the stub. But it was looking pretty good. Now, typically I use red mulch. You can see it left over here, but this year I changed it up, guys. We are going with black mulch. I'm thinking it's gonna look gray in a couple weeks, but <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Anyway, while I was planting, the stripper had a chance to do its job and that paint was just coming off really easy. But one thing I didn't show here in the video is that even the black paint started to come off. And so, you know, I needed to really get that smooth. You don't want black paint, the black paint to come off and then, you know, you try to spray paint this thing, it just didn't work. So steel wool, uh, even using a wire brush to get into some of the small corners and overall wiping it down with some water and then finishing up with some uh, afterwash worked pretty well. So I added a coat of paint. This is exterior paint and then measured because we're going to be doing a plaque and I wanted to cut out the corners. And so I just make sort of like a little template here and created this at each of the four corners and then used a jigsaw to cut it out. Now, if you've never used power tools, you gotta go down below and click my link on how to use a jigsaw. Seriously, it's like a 30 minute video, everything you need to know about using a jigsaw, it will help you get started with using power tools. All right, so once this was done, cut out, 
it was time to give it a little sanding to get it smooth. This is cedar, so it's going to be weather resistant, rot resistant. And then I added about two coats of an exterior bright white paint. Now, this is the plaque that I'm going to hang from the mailbox post. And so I went to Home Depot and I bought some eyelet screws and I bought some chain. Super, super cheap, like a dollar for the chain, a dollar for the eyelet screws. And then just use some needle nose pliers to open it up and close it tight. So while I was waiting for the plaque to dry, the white paint, I decided to do some pressure washing. This is the Ryobi 2300 PSI electric pressure washer with the surface attachment. This thing works great. I use it probably two or three times a year and I get it done pretty quickly. So once the paint was dry, I was able to just screw in the eyelet screws and then I had my nice little plaque that I hung some numbers on for my home address. Now, I'm not gonna show you my home address because who knows, there's crazy people on YouTube. Not you, but other crazy people. <laughs> and I don't want people to see my address. So just know that I added some, uh, some sticky numbers that I got from Home Depot. You can do the ones that screw on, either is fine. All right, so now it was time to paint the mailbox. And this is a really cool thing. If you are working outdoors, you need this spray shelter. I love Home Right spray shelters. This one just unzips and literally within like 20 seconds, it pops open. And what I like is that you don't have to put a tarp underneath, it already has a bottom. So put your mailbox in there and get to spraying. Now the tricky thing about this was doing the little flag part first. I didn't know what color I wanted to do, but then I thought pink would be really nice. I've got pink flowers, so why not? I put a piece of cardboard underneath and a little bit of tape to prevent some of the overspray and then painted that pink. Now, while that was drying, I went to the backyard and I did do a little bit of mowing. My yard is a hot mess, guys. I mean, really, you'll, you'll get to see some of the stuff that I did in the backyard next week. But when that was done drying, it was time to do the vintage teal. Now, remember that little playhouse that I did a couple weeks ago? That little playhouse makeover? I loved the turquoise. And so I decided, you know what? I want a turquoise mailbox. <laughs> so I used that exact same vintage teal color. Again, the material list is down below and you can find all that in that description. So two things are happening here. Number one, I'm getting paint all over the bottom of my spray shelter. <laughs> but then I realized, oh, well, I'm gonna be spray painting in here again, so who cares? Second thing is, I'm putting a piece of cardboard over top of the pink flag. I don't wanna ruin it, and it's still kind of wet for me to be taping it off. So very carefully, I just made sure that I kept the paint away from the flag. And then I got smart. I realized I had this really cool turnstile thingy from the thrift store for painting furniture. So it worked out really good. And when it was done, you guys, I absolutely loved it. I was not sure about the pink in the, tur in the turquoise, the teal, but you know what? I think it looks really good. And even my neighbor from across the street, she's like driving by the other day and she said, I love your mailbox. It just looks so good. She's like, I love when people update the neighborhood. <laughs> so pretty good. So I put the screws back in, secured it to the post, and then hung my little address plaque. So this is what it looked like before. You can see again, it was pretty sad. It was pretty pathetic. And this is not what I want people to see when they're driving up to my house. I want them to see this. And this is going to be welcoming them when I'm inviting them over. So once the mailbox was done, all the other yard work needed to be done and it took probably about two to three days. I did mowing, I cut some branches that had fallen in the yard and finally sucked up the last bit of leaves from the fall. <laughs> this is the Ryobi Vac Attack, it just came out. I like it, it's a leaf mulcher so you can suck those leaves up and all the debris from when you're doing your hedge trimming, it makes it really simple for cleanup. And then of course taking care of those last pesky weeds. And this is what my doors looked like before, about a week ago. And I love the color, but they were old, they were wooden. I painted them a number of years ago. Spiders, ants would crawl right underneath and there was no insulation. But now these are black. It looks a little bit more sleek and modern and I love it. These rocks were in the yard. We just kind of collected them and made a little flower bed. And now we have this beautiful entryway to greet guests for the spring and summer when we're ready to do our get togethers. So be sure to follow my next video because I'll show you everything that we're doing in the backyard. I will see you next video.